In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my God Slayer build. This is a New Game Plus build that focuses exclusively on the use of God Slayer's Greatsword in order to make the best use of the Queen's Black Flame weapon skill. You can obviously use this weapon in a regular New Game playthrough as you find it much earlier in the game than a lot of other weapons. However, there are some reasons why it works, I think, better in New Game Plus than a New Game, and I'll go into those into this video. So first, let's talk about God Slayer's great sword a bit. This is not actually a great sword, despite its name. It's actually a colossal sword, and it's extremely heavy, weighing 17.5, making it one of the heaviest weapons in the game, or pretty close. This can make it extremely difficult to use, because in order to use this weapon, you have to meet its requirements, or at least use it effectively, at 20 strength, 22 dexterity, and 20 faith, as well as have enough equip load in order to wear some sort of armor and your talismans and use anything else you want to use, in order to not, you know, be overloaded and very minimally heavy roll. And if you don't like heavy rolling, then you need even more endurance in order to medium roll. And also you'll need points in Vigor and you'll need points in Mind. So this is probably realistically a level 100 plus weapon if you're just using this weapon, decent armor, and you have decent stats into this weapon. And probably even higher than that if you're actually trying to boost, you know, dexterity in order to get even more damage out of this weapon. Which is one of the reasons that I decided to make it into a New Game Plus weapon because it really starts to be easily effective around that level 130 to 150 level or so, which will put you pretty close to New Game Plus, if not just into it. The unique thing about this weapon, besides its appearance, is of course its weapon skill, the Queen's Black Flame, which allows you to hit twice with sort of two attack sword slashes to deal both physical and fire damage, and set the Black Flame status effect that saps some of the HP of the enemy. What's really deadly about this weapon skill is that because it deals both physical and fire damage, the damage of this weapon skill will continue to increase with points in Dexterity, Strength, and Faith. So as you put points into these stats into NG+, and into NG++, the damage of this weapon skill will only continue to increase, making it sort of future-proof in that sense, as it's not going to like hit a wall really early on in your NG+, cycle or something like that, and get less effective after a certain point. It's just going to continue to match weapon, uh, enemy difficulty as you increase the difficulty into NG++, because the damage is going to continue to increase. Also, something to note about this weapon is that the dexterity scaling on it is very good. You can take this up to 80 very effectively, but the faith and strength scaling are not very good. Despite faith being C, it's still not very good scaling, and strength is not much better than it. So I don't recommend going very much above, you know, 20 strength and 20 faith, and focusing mostly on dexterity if you're going to use this weapon. In this build, though, I put 25 faith so I can use Golden Vow to further boost my damage. We were within five points anyway, it seemed like a no-brainer to me. The downside to the Queen's Black Flame weapon skill is that it has an extremely long wind-up, meaning that you're likely to get interrupted if you don't have very good poise, because you just are going to take hits a lot of times when using this weapon skill. It's hard to time exactly properly so that you don't get hit. Sometimes you'll be lucky and you'll hit and you won't get hit, but most of the time you're going to trade damage, and some of the time you'll get interrupted if you don't have high enough poise. And that's one of the reasons we use armor in this build that has extremely high poise. Because you want to be able to just trade hits, essentially. When you're fighting some of the more aggressive bosses in this game, and ones that have, you know, devastatingly hard-hitting weapons that you normally can't poise through even with, like, 60 poise, having, like, 100 poise plus is going to make it so that you can tank through those hits and keep swinging, which will just allow you to melt them really, really quickly. And since you have such high protection with very high protection armor, and the Dragon Crest Great Shield to further boost your physical protection as well as Golden Vow. You're not going to die when trading hits. And this just allows you to be extremely aggressive in boss fights and just wipe out bosses very, very quickly. I'm only using the Erd Tree Seal here because it weighs nothing. It has a 17 intelligence requirement and I started the game as an astrologist so I had 16 intelligence already so I just put one in to use it. But you don't want intelligence for this build. That is not a stat you need any of. So using something like the Frenzied Flame Seal would be better. That still weighs zero. It's harder to get. Um, but any seal is fine. You don't even need to upgrade it for this build because you're really only going to use two spells. Just try and get the lightest one you can because you don't want to add to your equip load any more than you have to because you're already going to weigh a ton. Other talismans I use for this build are the Shard of Alexander. Self-explanatory here. Just increases the damage of the Queen's Black Flame. You're going to be using this a lot. So you want to make sure it hits as hard as you can. And I use Carrion Filigreed Crest as well to further reduce the FP cost of it. Getting it down to 12 FP cost per swing. If you do back-to-back -back swings with it, which you will a lot, that's 24 FP. That's still quite a lot, so if you don't reduce this any, that's going to be 30. Getting any relief here you can is great because your stat spread is kind of crazy. 
And lastly, I use the Bull Goat's Talisman for further poise increase. This gives you 33% of your poise. Again, if you're using the Bull Goat's Armor, this is going to be 100 poise plus 33. We'll give you 133 poise. That's the most poise you can get in the game with Armor and Talismans. And that'll allow you to tank through just about any attack. So the two spells we use for this build are Golden Vow, as I mentioned, and Flame Grant Me Strength. This weapon deals both physical and fire damage, so this is a great buff for this weapon. And a lot of fights go really, really fast, particularly boss fights. So even the short duration of Flame Grammy Strength is going to come in useful in some boss fights because you can just buff with these two real quick, pop your potion, and then go into your Black Flame, uh, Queen's Black Flame attacks, and you can just melt bosses before they can really do anything to you. So the general strategy, obviously, for bosses is using the Queen's Black Flame and any difficult enemy you run into. But for regular enemies and stuff like that, I typically do like running R1s or jump R2s. It's really up to you what you want to use here. You can even remove the Bull Goat's Talisman and put like the Claw Talisman on for like, you know, the areas of the game that are just regular enemies in order to boost your jump attack damage if you want, since you will already have plenty of poise to tank through most regular attacks. So that's not a bad option. But one of the things I really love about the running R1 attack is it sort of does like a horizontal slice that cleaves through a lot of enemies. So if you see like a pack of enemies um, and you don't want to waste your Queen's Black Flame on them, you can just run up and running R1 into them followed by another R1, and it does really well. But one thing I want to mention about this weapon that you need to kind of be careful of is that even though this weapon is one of the longest-reaching Colossal Swords, its swing isn't exactly like the perfect horizontal slice. It kind of goes like down and then up a little bit, making it hit in a smaller hitbox than you would think it would. So you just kind of got to learn to judge the range of it because it's a little bit deceiving. You can, of course, use other incantations and spells with this build as well, but because it's a dexterity faith-scaling weapon more than a strength, Faith scaling weapon, you're not really going to be set up well to use the Claw Mark Seal unless you sacrifice damage with the God Slayer's Greatsword. And I don't advise that. There's tons of weapons out there you can use if you want to do a Strength Faith build. But this weapon has a really unique Ash of War, and it makes sense to utilize it as much as possible if you're going to use this weapon. When it comes to attributes for this build, we have 50 Vigor, 25 Mind, 30 Endurance, 25 Strength, 57 Dexterity, 17 Intelligence, 25 Faith, and 9 Arcane. So Intelligence and Arcane are not needed for this build. As I mentioned before, I started this build as an Astrologer, so that's not optimized very well. Ideally, your Intelligence would be as low as possible, and you'd have more points into Faith or something like Strength or Dexterity, since you need them for this weapon anyway. And that would give you a better stat spread than what I have here. Believe it or not, 50 Vigor is perfectly fine for this point in the game at the beginning of a new game. Plus, you have so much protection with this build. You have a very, very heavy armor set. You have the Dragon Crest Great Shield, and you have the Golden Vow buff. So even when you trade damage, you're not going to get hit as hard as you think you will. But you'll probably want to increase this to 60 as you progress into NG+. 25 Mind is there in order to give you enough FP to buff with Golden Vow when you need it, buff with Flame Grant Me Strength when you need it, and to use the Queen's Black Flame sometimes. It's not enough FP for this build. So you'll want to increase Mind as you progress NG+, probably get it up to like 35 or 40, because that will allow you to use the Queen's Black Flame more often, which will just make you more effective in general. 30 Endurance is not enough to use everything we're using here and the full Bull Goats armor set. It's actually enough to just give you like a mix of pieces in the Veteran's armor set, which also has very good poise. So at some point, you want to take this up to like 35, 37, 38 Endurance in order to be able to use that entire armor set to get you maximum poise. Strength is at 25. You don't really need more than 20 Strength here. You can remove 5 points if you want, put them into Dexterity. You'll probably get slightly more damage. It's not too much of a difference at this point from 50 to 80 Strength. The scaling is a little bit better than strength, not like a ton better, and, and the same is true for faith. So moving forward, you'll probably want to take dexterity to 80, and then you'll start increasing faith, and then lastly, you'll start increasing strength. This gives you a lot of room to further increase the damage of this weapon. That's about, if I'm not mistaken, 70 or so more points into your damage dealing stats. That's at least all of NG+, and probably all of NG++, if you put points in Vigor Mine and Endurance as well. So this weapon is going to do really good in this playthrough for NG+, as well as playthroughs after that. And as I mentioned, Faith is really only at 25 over 20. You know, 20 is the requirement in order to use Golden Vow, because that's going to give you even more damage and even more protection. When it comes to the Flask of Wondrous Physique for this build, I'd recommend using the Flame Shrouding tier in order to increase your fire damage. The weapon doesn't deal, you know, the weapon skill and the weapon itself don't deal 100% fire damage, so you're not going to get total efficacy out of this, but it will boost your damage further. And there aren't a ton of ways to boost your damage with items in this game, so this is a great way to do it. And the other one that's also a good choice is the Opaline Hard tier. This temporarily boosts all your damage negation for a little while, 
So uh, because you're going to be trading damage, this will further protect you in like boss fights, making sure that you don't die. And when it comes to great runes you want to use for this build, Godric's is obviously the choice here. Your stat spread is all over the place. You need points in strength, dexterity, faith, vigor, mind, and endurance. That's six of the eight stats. That's a lot of stats you need. And you can use, you know, a lot in each one too. It's not even like a small amount. So that is perfect for this build. So you're going to want to use that as soon as you defeat Godric. Go to the Divine Tower and get that. Well, that wraps up our God Slayer build. And I hope I made a good case why this makes sense to be more of an NG plus build than an NG build. You just need so many stats spread out all over the place to play with this effectively that it kind of makes more sense to use it as an end game build or NG plus build. Too much earlier than about a level 120, 100 or so, and you're going to struggle to get everything you need for this build and you'll be really unoptimized. So stay tuned, we have more build guides coming for New Game Plus, so look out for those, and I'm working on the next weapon video as we speak. Spoiler alert, it's Curved Swords.